Hello everybody, Zaydoctor here, and this episode of Typical Manga Review is going to be dedicated to My Hero Academia, Chapter 142, A Shield, A Shield, A Spear, and A Shield. One of these things is not like the others. But before we get to that, we're going to finish, come up to finish off Scent Eater's fight with the Garbage Trio. He actually, he's got them bound in, he's got them bound in tentacles, and he's, speaking, he's telling them that he took the liberty of dousing them, dosing them with poison, not enough to kill you. But you won't be on your feet with a smile anytime soon. And I'm going to take your masks, too. Can't know what's behind them, after all. And he's thinking to himself that it was far more trouble than it should have been. Than it should have been. He needs to join the others, but as he's thinking that, he actually collapses like, oh, now of all times. Our cover is a double paired of Kirishima, or is Red Riot, and Deku. And the chapter proper otherwise begins with, um... Oh, I forgot to say, the Sunny part was in color, so neat. But the black and white portion of this begins with, uh, um... Our team of heroes and cops charging through the halls. Red Ride is worried about Sun Eater. Like, he can't help but worry about him. And so is Deku. In fact, I'm just kind of taking note of this, like, zero faith in him, huh? I can't tell him he'll be fine and expect him not to worry. The kid's always acting small, so it's only natural. Like, he's thinking to himself, like, y yeah, they don't have much faith in him, so I can't just tell him not to worry about him. But, when the comrade tells you they're back, believing in him is what it means to be a man! And that's what gets Red Riot fired right up. He's our... He only does just fine. He's our senpai. Wait, now it just looks like you're a guy who's easily swayed, says Deku. I'm still worried, but there's nothing we for it. We gotta believe in him. We can't waste a single second of the time Sun Eater's given us to work with. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lock and Lobe's like, damn, those are some annoyingly intense kids. <laughs> Night Eye wants to take the stairs back up, but something's wrong. Yersei has noticed that the, um, the villain who's warping the basement hasn't shown any signs of movement. I don't expect nothing going on Forest Temple like it had before. And they're charging ahead to no obstacles. It's, it's not, if he's not going to try and impede us now, then it may mean that he can't exactly grasp what's happening across the entire basement floor and warp it. Um, Eraser, I also think that the, there's also a police squad that was left above behind Sun Eater. Maybe it's above, behind above Sun Eater. Maybe it's them. His attention is probably focused in that direction. So the reins he's aware of is limited? Lock and low basks? Ultimately, that's just my guess. He entered the underground and is manipulating it. If he hasn't become it, he hasn't become it. If he's just moving through the walls all the while watching listening, when he changes things or hinder, to hinder our pro progress, there's a real possibility his real body is somewhere nearby. And then his body may peek out, his eyes and ears probing. And we actually do see that um, Yerzy Red is correct because he's looking down at um, where Sun Eater collapsed and where the other three are, are tied up. To think they couldn't even stop one person, even if they're just trash, those three have considerable abilities. That's right, we've got him. You know, I'll back upstairs and see Bubble Girl and her group um, taking off, tying up a bunch of the regular Yakuza. I can't believe they all came out together and tried to stop us. You've been fighting you to stay quiet. I'm not sure you are, if you're all sane. Oh, we're sane. Everyone that you're capturing right now is perfectly sane. It's that if we all stayed quiet, Overhaul would have had our heads. Overhaul? Oh, you mean Chisaki. Ah, I see. That's the name he's been using ever since the previous couple collapsed and he took control. The leader of the gang revered the Yakuza disposition of a bygone era. This, and we're seeing a picture of the old man we saw in the bed earlier. He searched and searched for a path that would allow a gangster to live life in this day and age. Unlike villains, the Hasekai have to be silverous. They wrinkled at being designated a villain group. What we fell in love with was the boss, and now the cop was taking villain-esque names, welcoming villains into the fold. He's acting of his own accord, plunging his hands into, in money games that don't line up with what, what the boss had in mind. He's running around as he pleases, and the fact that the boss's body's gotten into a state like that, there's no way he's not involved. And the other guy's like, well, hold on there. Like, but Bubble Girl's taking note of like, the attitude here, like, hate him as you may, you don't think he'll get captured? That's right. Listen up, if anybody could be called insane, it's the people who never think about what comes next. And those people, they're strong. And just as they're saying all that, we come back to the basement where... Um, the Mimic guy is actually like, attacking Eraserhead through the walls. And Eraserhead realized that, just as I thought, he really doesn't want to see me. Um, he's trying to send Eraserhead through a wall, but... Um, he And the guy's thinking, if he those can do it, I'll just whittle them away carefully, one by one. But as that's happening, um, Fat Gum jumps in, grabs Eraserhead, and throws him out of, the, out of harm's... gets him out of harm's way. And in fact, I'm thinking of we play right into his hands, and the time Tamaki bottles will come to nothing, Eraser. You've got to erase him. 
Grace had apologized, but Sebastian was like, don't worry about it. And as he kind of recovers, he finds out that t underneath him is Red Riot. Like, but what are you, a baby chick? What are you doing? Well, I tried to take the hit, something to hit to take the hit for Sensei 2. I thought if it was me, I wouldn't take any damage. Then I got sucked into you. Oh, well, whatever. You must be bracing yourself. Hm. And so at this point, um, we see a guy come out um, ready to just, like, throw some blows. Red rides uses a punch, so he starts, he goes into Unbreakable. Like, I don't care if he can smash me up. He attacks Fat Gum, like, Lee Gatling's Fat Punch. Like, you know what I think? I think it's unbecoming to bring a gun or a blade to a fight. And you'll smuck with with a weapon in hand. That ain't a fight. People ought to kill each other using just the power they got in their bodies. Catch what I'm saying? And we see, of course, Red Riot took some shots, too. And he's actually, like, bashed against a wall. Created into it. It's like, he actually managed to do some damage despite Unbreakable. Fat Gum attacks, but he gets caught up in a barrier. The barrier? What the hell is this thing? And we see another guy come in. Fat Gum, and a boy who can harden his body. Just the two of them, I see. They both possess quirks that are well suited to defense. You won't be getting what you want out of them, Rappa, ruffian that you are. And there's a little note here that Rappa means ruffian, so it might be his villain name. But Fat Gum is still standing. He's actually back up on his feet and ready to get going. He's thinking, well, he's thinking himself to getting that level of hurt, hurt through all that fat of his. Talk about a bullet punch. Well suited to defense. You ain't done taking this punishment yet. So I guess it's okay enough you haven't been reduced to mincemeat yet, hmm? And Fat Gum thinks that these two weren't in the quirk records, so they must be from outside the organization. That flurry of punches like a hail of bullets and that barrier. A couple like that's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. We are spear and shield, says the guy in the robe. They are sealed and shield. Wait, you're telling me there's no fight to be had here? Damn. Although that boy over there would appear to be lacking is a shield. And indeed, like, he's kind of, like, feeling the pain right now. Like, he thinks that he was able to break me. I couldn't weather his blows. It hurts. If you're, and he's thinking to Baka, if you refuse to go down, it means you're stupidly strong. If he comes at me with another barrage, I won't be able to make it. I take it. I'd come here thinking I got strong, too. Damn it! I'm still... We see a little flashback of him as a little... Apparently as a younger kid with black hair. So apparently he died at, died at some point. Started dying his hair. But Fatcom calls out to him, Don't let up unbreakable mode! If your spirit also breaks in, you really lose! When you've got villains to clean up, it's always about how quick you make them give in. So you can't be losing the world to fight before them. Ah, they mean to defeat us. How thrilling for you, Rappa. So he does get it. Good little fatty. And Fat goes telling the Red Riot, We're going to punch these mooks to kingdom come and join back up to the rest. And that's where the chapter ends. And I have to admit, I am eager to see what Fat Gum can do in a fight. And like in a straight, even up fight. And I'm wondering now if this is going to be hinting towards Kirishima, Red Riot actually getting to like offense power too to go along with his defense because you know he's pretty tough as a defensive fighter because of hardening and we, but as soon as we learned that he just got smacked down by these guys so that means there's something else in play coming up here and we might get, like I've seen a few posts wonder if we're going to be able to get a um, Adrio Kirishima the origin like we have with Todoroki Bakugo and so on like a way to actually um like something that sort of gives us their backstory and kind of like shows like what drives them to be a hero. Look at Fat Gum going here too. Like we'll, we'll see. Um, so we'll have to see what two two rounds of defense can do against the defense and offense like these two have. I also I also we end up checking in with the girls at one point like um, Uraka and Juyu. because we have not seen them for a little while and mm, just want to see what they get what they get going. We also get a thing here. We also get some development on the how the group itself feels about overhaul. Like they actually liked the old boss. Like the old boss was trying to keep them respectable in some way, but overhaul, he's just like throwing his weight around, trying to get up and high in the villain leagues. And he's taking them. He's taking the yakuza in a direction that runs contrary to what their bosses had in mind. So hmm, there you go. There. So see how that goes. But and yet, as Bubble Girl notes, like despite how much they hate him. They're still more afraid of Overhaul than they are of the heroes. Because they don't doubt for a second that Overhaul's going to get away. That's rather suggestive all by itself when you stop to think about it. Hmm. Let's see here. And 
looks like Eraser is going to be the big key to defeating the Mimic. Just because you're putting so much trouble into him, into defeating him in that. So right now on the main team with, with Night Eye, it's still it's Night Eye, Deku, um, Lock and Lobe, and a few of the other here, and the police officers. If I got my name, if I got everything correct. Yeah, I was kind of doing a quick roll call here. Yep. So I guess the next one's going to be, um, actually, now I wonder, is the next fight going to be either Eraserhead and Deku together, or Lock and Lobe and Deku together, or Lock and Lobe and Night Eye? I wonder what the next combo, or, or who's going to be by themselves here. Hm. But I do, I, like, I like Fatcom a lot this chapter. I really do. Like, he wants to reassure them and make them feel good about leaving Sun Eater behind. Or at least make them not worry about it. But he's also perfectly aware that Sun Eater is Sun Eater. Like, there was a reason I was calling him Wallflower before we knew his name. Um, so he gives him a different reason instead. Like, he gives Kirishima, like, a different logic for not worrying about him at all. So, like, he knows how to work these... He knows how to work a crowd. <laughs> So that's kind of surprising. We haven't, he, like, I wonder if he could actually be a good teacher at UA now. Like, that'd be a neat thing to see. Let's see here, I'm trying to think if there's anything art-wise that's worth taking note of. Like, we got the first appearance of our, our other guy here, Rappa, for lack of a better name, and see, and Soul Reaper guy here. We got the black robe and the plague mask. So. Well, he, he just gets like a little but it's the big guy who gets the appearances to get ready to punch down fat gum. Hmm. One of those, those punches are his cork if he's just that tough. Tough to say. Hmm. I was wondering if stopping these guys is going to come down to doing something with the old man in the hospital bed. If anybody's going to be stopping him, stopping this group besides stopping overhaul, that's probably going to be the key. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Like I said, well, that was all chapter, actually, chapters down a lot to get into story wise. We got some nice development with the Yakuza, that's a little bit there. But it looks like this next few chapters is going to be focusing a lot on Kirishima and seeing what drives him so much. We got a little bit of that when he fought the guy in the street, but nothing like we're getting here. So, we'll see how this goes. In the meantime, I'm going to go and call the review there. That has been the typical manga review. My Hero Academia, chapter 142. Yeah, Couldn't see the number every second. A shield, a shield, a spear, and a shield. Until next week, I'll see you later, and bye bye